Hey everyone, Nick Dearbert is here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about calculating the weighted average cost of capital or WAC. And this is part of our lecture segment on the discounted cash flow valuation model and focusing on the cost of capital portion of the model. So this is our last video in this lecture segment. We already covered an intro to the DCF, enterprise and equity value, uh, cost and market value of equity, cost and market value of debt. Now we are just coming to put it all together as the end of the cost of capital portion of the model to calculate the WAC, which will become the discount rate we use in the DCF model. So if you have calculated a weighted average before, then this um, should feel very familiar to you because all it is is just a weighted average. And it's just a weighted average of the different uh, costs of capital and weighted by the percentage of that source of capital in the overall capital structure. So this is just focusing on debt and equity you could have a third term in here for preferred stock as well, or additional terms if you had additional, um, you know, different, uh, you know, maybe you have different seniorities of debt and you want to include those as separate components with different costs of debt. There are different ways to specify this equation, but this is kind of the general format. Um, you just take each uh, cost of capital and multiply it by the weight of that capital in the capital structure. <clears throat> and for any debt components, you're going to want to make sure that you use the after-tax cost of debt. So that's taking the pre-tax and multiplying by 1 minus the tax rate. Um, so this puts together everything that we have calculated so far. We've already calculated the cost of equity. We've calculated the cost of debt, calculated the tax rate, uh, so there is one uh, small calculation left to do before we get to the WAC itself, which is then calculating the weights of debt and equity. So the weights of debt and equity, very simple. It's just uh, the market value of that type of capital divided by the total capital. So uh, here in this uh, form of the equation where we just have equity and debt and, and one type of each, then it would be the market value of debt divided by the market value, or sorry, market value of equity divided by the market value of equity plus the market value of debt. And then over here, it would be the market value of debt divided by market value of equity plus the market value of debt. Um, if you had additional uh, components of the capital structure, then those would get added into the denominator of each of those weights as well. The market values you know, all your different market values for the different components are the denominator when you sum them up. And the market value of each component is the numerator in calculating the weight. So you should have something between zero and one for the weights on each of these. And then you just, uh, then we have all the components into this formula. So you just put them together and that ultimately gets you the whack. So, uh, and then to kind of visualize the effect of those weights, I uh, just made a quick graphic here which shows two companies which have the exact same costs of equity and debt, um, pre-tax and post-tax uh, cost of debt, are the same equity cost is the same, but the first company is uh, evenly split between equity and debt and the second company is weighted more towards equity. So you can see that resulting WAC is substantially lower, quite a bit lower for the 50-50 company than it is for the mostly equity company. And this is generally the case. Generally, uh, the cost of debt are lower than the cost of equity since debt is paid off first in the event of bankruptcy. Um, and so the more that a company is shifted towards debt, then the lower the overall cost of capital will be. Um, so it's definitely important to consider not only the rates on the 
uh, sources of capital, but also the weights that they have within the overall capital structure. So that wraps up the calculation of WAC. Uh, we're going to come back in the next lecture segment to focus on the uh, free cash flow side of the DCF model. So we have handled this part and we've handled this part and we're just going to focus on the free cash flow side of the model in the entire next lecture series and at the end of that we'll also put the whole thing together into one cohesive model so thanks for listening and see you next time